everyone, you know, this is an opportunity that I'm so thankful and appreciative for. Uh, you know, I, and, and none of this is possible without God. And, and I'm just I'm so thankful and appreciative to be able to have an opportunity to play left tackle for a franchise like this, to be able to block for a guy like Joe Burrow, um, to be able to play the system like this is, is truly something special. And I'm super excited for the opportunity. Orlando, what went through your mind? Back yeah, uh, a lot, man, a lot, because, you know, we, we all kind of, as as young men and young kids, you know, we set, set dreams and goals in this sport, and uh, for me, you know, I just want to be a franchise of tackle, and I want to win football games, I want to win Super Bowls, um, and and to be able to have the opportunity to play somewhere like, like you know, here in Cincinnati, and, you know, I, I've been on the other side of things, you know, for some years, and, um, I mean, just, just playing and competing against this group uh, year in and year out. I mean, it's, you, you kind of know what you're getting. And I, and I knew when that offer came through, it, it was something I couldn't pass up. Can you take us back through the last year with Kansas City? There's been a lot of speculation that the Chiefs maybe wanted you to play right tackle, and that's why things didn't get done. Can you tell us about that and why it's so important for you yeah. to get this deal as a left tackle? Yeah, uh, you know, if, as far as that, I, I really don't want to get, dive into that too much. But, uh, you know, I am a left tackle. And, and I played that in my entire life. Um, Kansas City, as far as I know, per- never personally asked me to play right. But, uh, you know, I just felt like this was an opportunity for me to be able to be a left tackle and a franchise left tackle. And, you know, I have a two-year-old son, and I always, you know, preach to him, even though he may not understand, be better than me. And that was something my dad was really big on in our household. And he was a right tackle for 13 years. And for a long time, you know, he, he felt like he never necessarily got his gratification because of that. And you know, not necessarily blocking the premier guys. And, um, and as, a, as a young child, I set out, you know, to be a left tackle in this league. You know, I, I studied Jonathan Noggin, I studied Andrew Whitworth. I watched, I watched those guys, Tony Baselli, uh, Anthony Munoz, and, um, you know, to be able to, to be here in this position, uh, it's, it's just crazy, but that's it. Well, Lando, I'm sure this goes without saying, but how much was coming here, the allure of playing with a quarterback like Joe Burrow. Yeah, big time, big time. You know, uh, I'm, I'm kind of spoiled, you could say, in the football world uh, with the guys that I've played with, uh, the teams I've been on as well. Uh, but being able to play with a guy like Nine, I mean, man, that's, that's a tough opportunity to pass up, knowing that, you know, we're both the same age and uh, at similar points in our career. When the week started, the negotiating period opened, did the Bengals immediately kind of come up with it? Was this a, you know, did this develop as the week went on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had we had some uh, some interest from some other teams, but uh, I believe Cincinnati had the most interest, and uh, this was something that we wanted to get done. This was something that they wanted to get done, and uh, thank God it was able to. At what point did you feel like Cincinnati was the destination? Right? Yeah, uh, honestly, uh, once they reached out to us, I mean, I just, I mean, I, I felt like this was the best situation. Did that happen on Monday? Uh, yeah, yep. Was Sunday, there, were they in your radar before free agency, like? weeks before were you thinking like Cincinnati could be a place or did it kind of come out of nowhere for you? Yeah, uh, I didn't really know. You know what I mean? Uh, it's one of those things when I mean, that's the business side of it. That's probably a better question for my agents. But, um, you know, I, I just, like I said, once once I saw, once I heard it was Cincinnati, I mean, I, was, I mean, this is, this, is a, this is a tough opportunity to pass up, you know, regardless. So everything worked out. All so you've been line, to... Offensive yeah. line is obviously been a big topic in the city for years now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are fans going to see from you? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean you're getting a competitor, and uh, I think I've proven that. You know, you're getting a competitive left tackle that loves to block one on one, loves to have those opportunities. Um, you're getting somebody that's a leader in the locker room, that's going to be a leader in the offensive line room. Um, you know, it's my responsibility to do my best and uh, go out there and compete at a high level every single week, every single day. Um, so yeah, you're getting you're getting a fierce, fierce competitive left tackle. Now, um, talk about your leadership. You've obviously been to the Super Bowl. You won a Super Bowl. Cincinnati's come close a couple of times. Yep. What do you What do you think you can bring to the table in terms of that experience? Yeah, um, I, I just you know, and you kind of stated there with my leadership. Uh, I I personally feel like this isn't a team that's far away. Uh, you know, they're they're right there on the cusp, and uh, you know, it's been some things here that happen here and there. But you know, even in Arrowhead last year, you know, they're they're a few plays away from from being in the Super Bowl, and. Um, you know, it's 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 a lot, but you know, I just feel like my leadership that I'm bringing, uh, my competitive spirit, uh, being able to mess with the guy, other guys in the room, um, I feel like that's that's probably the main things. How you much did Joe Burrow since he got here? I have, yeah, and we actually had lunch yesterday. How'd that go? Uh, it went really well. Uh, I had the opportunity to get to know him a little bit. It's my first time meeting him. 
uh, you know, he's fired up just like I was. And, uh, man, we, we, we sat and talked over cheeseburgers, believe it or not, in, uh, in the hotel room. But uh, I asked him a bunch of questions about himself, vice versa. Uh, Cincinnati as a whole, um, the system, scheme, uh, coaches, uh, locker room, all of that, man. And, I mean, you know, you can tell right away, you know, why he's had the success he's had. You blocked for LeBron, but he wanted to be. You blocked for Pat Mahomes, but he wanted to be. Yo. I mean, having that specific experience, how much does that really help out a guy like Joe Burrows? You know, how that thing in? Yeah, big time, big time. I personally feel like, and and I mentioned that to him as well. Um, but you know, ultimately, uh, Joe isn't in this for self accolades. You know, he wants Super Bowls, and I'm in it for the same reason. What number are you? Uh, Seventy five. How much of an impact did your father have, both on you personally and obviously? Yeah, uh, he had a huge impact on me. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, it, it's a lot because, you know, obviously he's not here, but uh, he had a huge impact on me and, and, you know, where I'm at in life. Uh, a lot of, he gave me so much insight as far as, you know, the game and learning things and, and you know, most importantly, being a, being an amazing person off the field and, and uh you know, I just, I, I'm so thankful for both of my parents. I'm so thankful for my father and, and all the lessons taught and learned. And, um, and I, I, you know, I could talk about that for hours, but uh, I just want to keep it short. What do you know about the rest of the Bengals offensive line? And if you know anything. Yeah, um, I've had the opportunity to talk to Teddy K. Uh, we'll talk to Kappa a little bit. I don't know if he laughed when I said Teddy K. Um, everybody laughs when I said Teddy K for some reason. But, uh, uh, yeah, I had the opportunity to talk to him, uh, Kappa, and uh, Volson as well. So uh, it seemed like a great room, great group of guys. Uh, I look forward to getting to work with them. Everybody's what they call glass eaters. So I'm glad to be a glass eater. But uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, it, it seems like a ton of energy, ton of positive energy in the room. Uh, and I mean, just guys that really love the game, love the work. You come from a very accomplished line in Kansas City. Yep. In your experience, and, and you're obviously building that same kind of unit here, <laughs> what are the characteristics of a good offensive line unit from, from that? Yeah, um, I, think, I think to be a great offensive line, it really starts with the camaraderie of the group off the field and uh, having that trust in each other uh, in certain situations off the field. And, you know, being in Kansas City, having won the Super Bowl with all those, all those great men in that room, uh, our camaraderie was truly special. We spent a lot of time together off the field. And uh, that naturally, you know, when you get in those positions, when you're in the position on the field, you know, I mean, it's you're battle tested. You know, you know that the man next to you is ready for the fight. And uh, that's something that, I, you know, obviously I'm not, I haven't been here, so I don't really know uh, specifically details on things like that. But uh, I just feel like, you know, that camaraderie is probably the most important, most important thing. How much did your perception of this organization and you have unique perspective change yeah. Orlando over the last two years? Uh, yeah, I mean, just, just, I mean, it, it's crazy to say that, but, but yeah, I mean, they've, they've been able to really turn the corner and I, I never personally, I never felt like the Bengals were far away. I've always felt like the talent pool here, the guys I've had to play, whether that be Carl Lawson, Sam Hubbard, um, I mean, Geno Atkins, they've had, they've had Carlos Dunlap, they've had guys. And, um, you know, I believe that, you know, Coach Taylor coming in here, uh, the step that he's been able to make, uh, obviously Mr. Brown, whatever he's doing to allow that, um, I just, I feel like I've been able to kind of see from afar the transition on everything, but it's, it's moving in a pot really, really, really positive direction. I know on one of the TV shows, we were doing stuff with ESPN, and yep. we were talking about how last year, it was hard for you mentally to play on the tag, yep. because of, you know, potential injuries, things like that. Yep. How much clearer is your mind going to be moving forward now that you have this four years yet with the Bengals? Yeah, very clear, very clear. You know, and, and to be able to have an opportunity to play for a franchise that, uh, you know, is really believing in me long term to give me the opportunity uh, to be able to tr protect someone like Joe, to be able to go out there and, and be the man that I want to be. Um, you know, it was, last year was really hard on me just because of, you know, the, the worries of injuries and, you know, the worries of maybe not being there long term or, you know, relationships you build in the locker room and around the building, uh, those type of things kind of, you know, they mess with you a little bit. And, uh, you know, it didn't necessarily affect my game, but it was definitely something that was on my mind and heart. Have you felt the reaction? <laughs> yeah, big time, big time, man. big time. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to be a Bengal. Uh, there's been a lot of positive energy. Uh, you know, I, I can't wait to get in the city, get involved in the community, uh, be able to go out and shake some of these people's hands and see their faces. Have you thought about what it would be like to be part of the first Bengal team to win a Super Bowl? I have. I have. Me and Joe were talking about that yesterday. I, I mean, it's going to be really cool. You know, and I, I believe that's something that's going to happen. You know, especially with nine. 
coach, man, I mean, it's, it's just, as I said, you know, so many positive things I could say, but defensively, uh, how well they are here, how schematically, how great they are here defensively, too. I mean, they, they got all the pieces, in my opinion, and, and I'm very, I'm very, very happy to be a part of it. I know just based on on the field and blocking for Burrow, this is a destination you wanted to be at, but were there any conversations the last couple of days that you had that helped sell you on this place to, to really affirm that, yeah, this is definitely where I want to be here? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, for them to believe in me as a left tackle was enough. And, uh, you know, man, I'm willing to put my life on the line for that. You're probably too young. You're probably too young to remember some of those old Ravens uh, Bengals games. Not at all. <laughs> you remember any of them? I do. Remember your dad talking about it all? I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember them uh, real, real specifically, man. Um, there, you know, obviously that rivalry is super competitive. Uh, having been on that side as a fan and as a player, uh, it's, it's super overly competitive. But you know, honestly, it's a lot of it's a lot of teams that that really want to you know beat Cincinnati and uh, you know just around the NFL. I think that obviously the Ravens uh, rivalry is real. You know what I mean? But uh, I feel like the last few years, this this organization has kind of come out on top of it. And, did he ever talk about Chad jumping on his back in pregame warmups? Oh, I know the whole story about that. One. Yeah. Oh, please don't. Yeah. So, uh, as far as I know, um, my dad was uh, warming up uh, pregame out here, and I think at the time it was Paul Brown Stadium, and uh, I can't remember who he was talking to or something like that, but. My dad's warming up, and he's a real rough and rugged guy. And you know, when it came game day, like I couldn't even talk to him as a son, so <laughs> he didn't mess around. And um, believe it or not, Chad Johnson jumps on his back, and my dad's chasing him around the field. And uh, they say the visual is Chad Johnson's backpedaling around the stadium in a circle. Like, hey, I'm just playing. I'm just kidding. And uh, long story short, my dad chased him into the locker room. Police had to stop him from getting in the locker room. The team security came out and grabbed him. Uh, and then I was, yeah, so uh, I can only imagine how mad he was. I couldn't even ask for a handshake on game day. So. <laughs> Chad asked Willie what he should do, and Willie said, stay in here before the, until the game starts. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> TJ Hushmizada actually told me that story, too. So. <laughs> you, you talk about the, the Bengals Ravens rivalry. How, how do you characterize this? Growing Bengals cheek. Right? Yeah, I know it's uh it's really intense. It's really intense, I believe, on both sides. Just because uh, the the Chiefs, obviously, being one of the top teams in the AFC, the top team at the time, uh, you know, Cincinnati, where they are, uh, it's always competition as far as who's going to get the seedings. And you know, it's those games have just become so important uh, for that part and aspect of the game. Uh, for playoffs, and so it's just naturally created this competitive rivalry. You know what I mean? As you could say, Bills Chiefs rivalry. You know what I mean? Or even, you know, possibly, you know, Bills Bengals rivalry. It's it's those big games are going to come up, especially when you're playing playing a number one schedule every year. In, in the weeks leading up to the AFC Championship, the week leading up to the AFC Championship game, how aware were you guys of the Burrow head comment? How, how did that play? <laughs> Yeah, very, very aware, very aware, man. But, you know, I, I got a ton of respect for the organization, and, uh, man, I, I got nothing negative to say. <laughs> did you, did, do you think there's a, you know, they talk about the age of North. I mean, is there, is it, I mean, do you think it, I mean, you know, you've been in the other division for a couple of years. I mean, is it unique? Is it no, it is. It is. It's really competitive, uh, top to bottom. And all divisional games in the NFL are competitive. I mean, but, I mean, AFC North is different. And there's a reason that a lot of guys come in this division and they leave and have success. You know what I mean? It's it's not necessarily for the week. You know what I mean? It's, it's a lot of big physical, big boy football. And you know, each organization is is very old school. You could say somewhat in their approach. And I feel like you know that kind of shows up on Sundays on the film. Is that playing to you? Is that playing to your? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm I'm more of an old school type of player than. Than, than anybody in the league right now. You know what I mean? That's what makes me so different. Why, why is that? Uh, just my lack of athleticism, my size. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, I'm a chip off the old block. It's not a lot of guys out there like me. And uh, I've been below the line, you know, my, my entire career and uh, my entire life, to be honest. But uh, I think what, what's allowed me to, to put myself in this position is that old school mindset that's been instilled with me from my father, my mentor, Jamal. Um, and it's one of the reasons I'm here. You still play with the chip on your shoulder? Yeah, I got a huge chip. Yeah, I'll always have a chip on my shoulder. I, I always got a lot to prove. And, you know, I, I've also got really big goals and dreams and things that I set uh, personally for myself uh, that I haven't even come close to touching yet. And, 
You know, I, so many more Super Bowls I want, so many more, so many more All Pros I want to make, so many more Pro Bowls I want to make. It's, it's, it's a lot. I got, a, I got a big, really big chip on my shoulder. Changing Michael Tweets and other time along those lines, your pre-draft process really fuels you. Yeah. How? Yeah. Well, you know, obviously what happened at the combine, um, you know, my pro day and all of that. Uh, you know, this is kind of who I am as a athlete. Uh, it's not, not necessarily you could say special there, but um, you know, it's, it's just a really big feel for me, just because. You know, it's it's not. I'm not someone that's easily to be compared to others. You know, what I mean, it's it's hard for probably my peers to turn on the film and really get a gauge of a guy, uh, whether that be his power or his speed, whatever whatever it is, because of my style of play. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, it's it's the combine that pre draft process really created a big chip on my shoulder, being a third round pick, feeling as though I was the best offensive tackle in that draft. Um, and uh, you know, I've I've made the last four Pro Bowls. I just come just coming off a Super Bowl championship. Um, you know, this team believes in me as a, as a left tackle. Uh, I, I got a really big chip on my shoulder, and I got, you know, I put a lot of pressure on myself individually as well, you know, and I, I hold myself to a really high standard. Did you meet the Bengals in 2018 before the draft, do you remember? I did. I did. Yeah, it was honestly one of my harder uh, harder uh, pre-draft, uh, pre-draft uh, interviews. What do you remember? Um, gosh, uh, Coach Lewis asked me a question. Um, man, I messed this all the way up. He asked me the uh, capital of Spain. I said Portugal. Uh, yeah, I killed. I still killed the interview, but yeah, I'll never forget that. He asked me to count minus a hundred, count from a hundred minus two, minus four, plus two. I, was, I played football. <laughs> Do you remember anything about Frank playing that? Did you mean he was here? Uh, you know what? I like. I don't really remember much, much of that part of the meeting, but but you know, I remember speaking to him. Yeah. What's the significance of, of uh, 75? Uh, you know, just give me the opportunity to, you know, obviously I wore 57 in Kansas City, you know, for for representation of my father and, and uh, yeah, Jamal. So, um, you know, it was just similar similar meeting. Obviously, the numbers just flip flop. So. Can you give us a start? Go ahead, Paul. Yeah. Great Ravens and Chiefs are on the schedule, obviously. Are there yeah. revenge games for you? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that. You know what I mean? I don't like to make games bigger than what they are. So, you know, once we get to that point, we'll kind of see it's – you know, for me, every Sunday is an opportunity to prove myself. Can you give us a scouting report on Cody Ford? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're getting a big body guy that, uh, you know, is really hungry. He's got a really, really big chip on his shoulder. Obviously, how things went in Buffalo and Arizona. Um, and I know he's been working really, really hard. But uh, he's physical. He loves to loves to put guys on the ground. He plays with a lot of energy. Uh, he's got this infectious uh Work ethic, you could say. But I remember him coming in as a young player. He's one of the few, like Creed Humphrey, that they threw in with the big guys right away. You know, most guys come in as freshmen. During the freshman group, Cody was with the big guys right away. What is it about Oklahoma guys? Yeah, things like. Oh uh, man, I don't know. You know, Coach being from Norman, I don't, maybe that's maybe it's got a little bit to do with it. But uh, he just knows the kind of guys you're getting. You know what I mean? These are all of us are very similar. You could say in our work ethic, our approach, our mindset. Uh, you know, it's just kind of how you're groomed. You know what I mean? And and. Jerry Schmidt had a really big impact on that, uh, really all of us. Um, and I mean, I think, you know, we all kind of shine through him in this weird way, but, uh, and it's in so many other people with, you know, Coach Stoops, the foundation that he laid for us, um, you know, Coach Beatenbo up front, uh, you know, the the way that he coached us. And, and, you know, I think we, in our old line room, I mean, man, I want to play one of my teammates from there now, but uh, I mean, I think it's eight or nine of us in the NFL or have played, so. Talk about different edge rushers from Cincinnati about against your career. Yeah. Who would you say has been the toughest, or who are you most important to go against in practice the next couple of weeks? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 9-1 is one of the best in the game, and uh, man, I'm happy I'm on this side of it now. But uh, I look forward to competing against him.